number one thing that anybody that is in a situation in a home where they live with somebody that's difficult, that uh, can be provoking, and they're just trying to be happy, and you have somebody there that is unpredictable. And sometimes they can be really in a good mood and nice, and then other times they can be just crabby and in a bad mood. And what happens is that you become the object of uh, projecting all those bad feelings on. And that's pretty much what happens when you live with a narcissist. The reality is the, the most difficult part in living with somebody like this is our reaction to it. The story we tell ourselves, the way we feel when we're around them or the way we feel they are making us feel. Nobody can really make you feel anything. Why we feel sometimes their projections is because we are vulnerable because of the beliefs and the patterns we have about ourselves that have made us more of a match to it. Self-love which a lot of people think, oh, so I love myself and I take care of myself and that, and you know, big deal. Self-love is not just this little thing where I just take care of myself and, and you know, I just start saying I'm gonna put me first. No, self-love takes practice. Self-love takes learning. Self-love takes action. It does take time to really be proactive in self-love, especially when that has not been your habit. When your habit has been to put your attention everywhere else and on everybody else, well then when that is not received well or when that is criticized and that is where we are getting our value, feeling like we have our worth, then it's going to be very painful and very difficult to live with anybody that is critical. And a narcissist can be very critical. You know, we all want to enjoy our holidays and have fun. And then some of us just dread it because we're dealing with people in our home that are extremely difficult to live with and that provoke us constantly. And I know what it's like to be triggered. I, I was just triggered the other day about something. And I realized it took me all day to, to work through that trigger. So triggers are... They're not light. They're not a light thing. It's not like we just get mad and then we can just get over it. Sometimes it can rankle in us and take us a while to process it and get through it. And so we want to be able to not be triggered constantly because we don't want to feel completely upset all the time. We want to be able to have some calmness in our day and some joy and some fun and some laughter. One of the, I was thinking, what is the, the number one thing you need to be able to do when you're living with a difficult person. And that is you've got to be able to know how to clear your energy. So in this video, I wanted to talk about some ways that you can do that, okay? Basically, when it's checking in with yourself regularly and asking yourself, how do you feel? And that takes practice because we're not used to doing that. So how am I feeling right now? Like and maybe leaving markers throughout the day or setting a timer where you stop and you ask yourself, how am I feeling? Because we get in this uh, habit, in this mode, and we get on a roll, and then we just get busier and busier and busier, and things pick up, and we have all these things to do. And to slow down and to take stock of where we're at and to say, okay, I need something right now. I'm starting to feel exhausted or I actually need to use the restroom and I've been ignoring it for the last two hours, or I'm very thirsty and I've been thirsty for a couple hours and I haven't even paid attention. I need to go get myself something refreshing to drink, or I'm feeling low energy. I could really use a cup of coffee or maybe a quick power nap, or I just have been sitting at this desk for hours. I need to get up and stretch a little bit and take some deep breaths, maybe bounce a little on my trampoline or whatever you do. Or I would love to just go out and just sit in my yard for a little while. It's a beautiful day. I could use some nature. You've got to be able to check in with yourself and say, how am I feeling and what do I need? That is kindergarten in self-love. Okay, that is so 
important. It's like learning your ABCs. You're not even going to be able to truly properly love yourself unless you're in the habit. And I mean in the habit. And what is a habit? It's something that you just almost do naturally. You're in the habit of checking in with yourself. And so in the beginning, it's not a habit. In the beginning, you have to start saying, okay, uh, let me, how am I going to remind myself? Because when I first started, here's how it evolved for me. When I first started asking myself, how do I feel and what do I need? For one thing, I would do it in the mornings when I was, you know, kind of preparing myself for the day. And then I usually get to the end of the day and of course, all these things happen, have these stresses and everything. And I would think I'd never checked in or I'm not doing this or I get through a whole week and I think I've been forgetting to check in with myself. And it wouldn't be until I was stressed out into the hilt and then trying to back paddle and going, what's going on? That I would realize, well, I haven't even been checking in with myself. If you don't even have this basic thing down, it's going to be harder for you to move on to doing the bigger things. And, you know, like taking a stand with people and putting boundaries up and, and having confidence and not giving a, a fuck about what people think of you, you know, those type of things are going to be a little difficult if you can't even check in with yourself and give yourself what you need. So that's going to be very basic. And in the beginning, I suggest finding a way to put little prompts or reminders around, whether it's an alarm or you have certain times of the day, like I'm, I'm going to do it at my break time at work and I'm going to do it as soon as I get off and I'm going to do it at dinner time or whatever. You have certain times that you have it set in your mind that part of this routine of this part of the day is asking myself, how do I feel and what do I need? And as you start making that part of your day, you'll start getting more into the habit of it. You'll start seeing how well it works and you'll want to do it more because you'll start seeing, wow, that really made a big difference. Just checking in and actually meeting a need for myself. It actually stops this flow because we're constantly focused out here we're giving our energy away we're giving everything away and we're draining our battery and then when we go to have something for ourselves there's nothing left even if we wanted to do something we have no energy to do it and so then that is lays the bedrock for depression because we don't live our lives in any way that's joyful in what we want to do because by the time it's time to do anything that we truly want to do for ourselves selfishly, we have no nothing left. We have no battery. We have no energy left to give. So it's going to be super important, and especially as you move through the holidays, that you have that in place. And so, and then also clearing your energy. Because if you have this bad energy that came on you from the person that you're living with, or the person that you're dealing with on a regular basis that tends to make you get you all wrinkled and make you feel upset and uh, make you doubt yourself and all those types of things. And you just keep, and you take that and you hold on to it. And then the next time comes and you hold on to it. And the next time comes, you hold on to it. Then you are, you're uh, getting denser and denser and denser, and you're going to start falling down that spot that scale again, that vibrational scale. And instead, if you have a practice, a regular practice of clearing your energy, now I clear my energy probably two to three times a day now. But when I started, I used to do it uh, once a week. And then I realized that once a week wasn't enough. And I started doing it every morning. And then now I do it regularly, like it, I'll, if, whenever I'm feeling kind of pulled down because now now that I've been clearing my energy and I've subtly noticed the differences of when my energy is clear when it's bogged down now I start feeling it when it's bogged down and I instantly go into okay I need to clear my energy and I told you uh in the last one I have the selenite bar but it's very high vibration and it clears energy it, it literally clears energy so i'll get that and i'll brush i love that i can feel it i've done it on my daughter too and she says oh yeah i feel it i'll literally brush my inner my aura off with that 
Another thing I learned from a course that I take, and it's um, the Sage Circle, if any of you are interested in it, and it's about building up your psychic abilities and your intuition and all that. But anyways, I, she talks about uh, clearing, grounding, and protecting. And so that's how I clear now. And basically what you do is you, you, you have a practice that feels good to you. So it doesn't have to be the same for anybody. It is uh, finding a practice where you are actually imagining uh, your, and imagination is powerful. Imagination creates, okay? So it's not just the imagination. It actually does the work that you're imagining it to do, okay? So uh, imagination has been uh, kind of tossed aside by humanity as far as it's relevance and its importance in reality it's like it's separated it's like one thing is imagination and one thing is reality but that's not true your reality is created by your imagination so it is very important <laughs> but that's a whole nother video so it's like for me i always just think of the light like i do a lot of my meditations if you've done my meditations i always just bring a light into myself i'll quiet myself and i'll imagine my crown chakra opening and a light pouring down in me and around me and just clearing and clearing everything out you can also do clearing meditations you can do them on uh, youtube there's i usually find a real short one but when you want to clear yourself on a regular basis, you want it to be quick. So when you first begin, find things, take 10 or 15 minutes to find a way that literally starts to feel like when you're done, you just feel like, wow, I just feel so relieved. I feel brightened. I feel much better. You'll just start to sense it, that your energy has been cleared. When you clear that energy, you also find a way to ground yourself into, into earth. So when we've been through a lot of drama, trauma, abuse, when we are susceptible to post-traumatic stress disorder, one of the number one uh, ways that we, uh, a human being uh, deals with trauma and that type of thing is called dissociation. So they kind of leave their reality and that's why a lot of us feel so desensitized to what's going on around us because we've literally trained ourselves to not be here in the present moment and that's why being present is touted so highly because it brings us back down into the reality that we have opted in to be in we want to be here but we also want to be able to feel and experience it and so grounding helps you bring you back down into this reality so that you can actually feel life and be in the present moment and not be out here in your head and back here where I'm at right now, okay? So for example, up here, I'm floating, I've been triggered, I'm floating up here and I am all over the place and uh, I'm so tired of this marriage and this will never end, this is never gonna get better and who they think they are, blah, 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 right? and we're just up here in the head. But if we actually were able to kind of ground, clear that out and ground back here, we would realize, oh, in this moment right now, it's quiet. My dog's laying on the ground, sleeping. Look at the stomach rise and fall. Notice the presence of my plant the quiet present of it sitting there. How, you know what I'm saying? It's like it's bringing you to this, this exact moment where I'm fine. In this exact moment, I'm okay. And if I need something, I can go meet that need. Well, maybe I'm a little hungry. When you come into the present, you'll start noticing your needs. Maybe I'm a little hungry. Maybe I'll go grab something. What do I, my, what does my body want? That's what grounding does. It brings you into the present. So one of the ways that you can ground is by imagining that same light going down into the earth and hooking into it somehow. Uh, the lady that does the sage circle says she literally imagines a rope tied around her waist and then it goes through to the core of the earth and it's tied down, anchored down in there. I imagine the light of Mother Earth coming up and just embracing me and holding me and that my light is just anchored in her heart.
And then protect is just literally, again, just asking for that protection, asking your angels and guides to completely surround your aura, your space. Um, so, so I usually start with my aura and sometimes I'll say if I'm my office area or my home or my complete neighborhood at times I've done, wherever you feel like you need to, but you ask for a light and you imagine that light of protection around you where nothing can get in that is not supposed to be in or that is not of the energy of um, pure, unconditional love and above. Once you start practicing this, it seems like a big, long deal, and it is in the beginning when you're not used to that. But once you start practicing it now, for me, it takes me just a few minutes to just clear ground and, and protect. It doesn't take me very long to do that now. And if I feel like my energy is especially low, then I might do some more, uh, like I might take a detox bath and put some uh, an oil blend in that is high vibes. So over the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about things that you can do to help you get through the holidays when you are living with somebody that is really difficult and tends to make it difficult for you to stay in a, a positive place. So I think I'm gonna just leave it at that. I just wanted to tell you that the number one thing that you need to work on is uh, to start out is to check in with yourself regularly, asking yourself, how do I feel and how, what do I need? And then clearing your energy. And if you want to dive deeper into your personal situation, I do offer a uh, complimentary self-love awakening call and it's 50 minutes to an hour long and we can talk about your particular situation and maybe go into some strategies of what you can do in your particular situation and we can also maybe uh, discover where you need to work on your self-love, where you might be blocked in your self-love. And one thing I do want to say is that self-love is not some, it's not optional. It's just not an optional thing. And if you don't have a really strong foundation of genuine self-love, you are going to be a hamster in a wheel. You're going to just be spinning your wheels. You're going to find yourself back in the same situation over and over and over again. Maybe feeling a little better for a minute, going faster for a minute, but then just I'm still in the same wheel. I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just in the same rut and I'm so tired of it. The way to get off that hamster wheel is to get you back in the hub of your life and to get you genuinely loving yourself, knowing yourself, advocating for yourself, all those things, having strong boundaries, all those things are a part of self-love. It's not something that's that's light. It's not something to go, oh, maybe I'll, I'll learn this one day, maybe I won't. It's something that you really, really need to get grounded in. And if you feel like you're lacking it, I'm telling you, it can make all the difference in the world in your life. So if you want to hop on a call with me, I would love to talk with you and brainstorm some things that we can do and then we can talk about whether we want to work further. If you've already had a complimentary call and even if you've been in my courses and worked through my courses, but you just want to talk to me, then I, I do offer one-on-one -on -one sessions and I will leave a link for that as well so we could get on for an hour and just deal with what you need to deal with at that moment. So I'll leave a link for that as well and for a discovery call, for a complimentary discovery call. And I wanted to tell any of you that might want to get on board with the Christmas, the or I'm sorry, the holiday self-love reset gift to yourself, which is only $11.11. .11. So it's super cheap. It's the whole season. You'll have something in your email every Sunday. So you can set time aside and you can spend time journaling and thinking about your week and being preemptive about your holiday season so that you can start moving forward into the holiday with a, a, a more positive anticipation rather than just kind of going into it and allowing things to just happen to you. This will kind of make you stand back ask some questions, make some adjustments. Every week, the uh, journaling is powerful. 
There will also be a, a healthy recipe that you can do. There will be a little beautifying, um, pampering, uh, non-toxic uh, regimen that you can partake of if you're interested. It is not too late to hop in on that, and I will leave a link for that. I can go ahead and give you last Sunday's content, and then you will have next Sunday's content to look forward to. So it's not too late to that for that. And if you're gonna feel like you're gonna struggle through the holidays, I am going to encourage you to get on board. Talk to you guys later. Bye bye.